Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk. I'm Jie Zhang from UCL. It's my great honor to have this opportunity to introduce our ICSI work, Ignorance and Prejudice in Software Fairness. It's a work that I collaborated with Professor Mark Harmon. Fairness is an important topic in machine learning software. In the machine learning community, we see this abrupt increase in the number of published papers about fairness. In the software engineering community, it is also widely acknowledged that lots of efforts are required from software engineering researchers, for example, in the requirements, specification, design, testing, and verification to guarantee the fairness in the machine learning. And fairness is also one important non-functional testing property that deserves a lot of efforts from software engineering researchers. Let's look at some background on fairness in machine learning software. There is this concept called protected attributes, which means the features of the people that we may have prejudice towards, such as people with different races, genders, ages, and so on. Based on this, the data could be classified into privileged and unprivileged group, where the unprivileged group members they are often at disadvantage. For example, when we try to predict the income, male group is often the privileged group, but female group is often the unprivileged group. So what exactly is fairness in machine learning? Well, there are lots of fairness definitions in the literature, but they could be summarized as the following. So fairness means when privileged groups and unprivileged groups, they are treated equally. For example, they have an equal probability of discern outcomes or predictive performances. Speaking of the bias and fairness in machine learning software, it often makes us think of the bias in people. And the Turing Award winner, Yann Lacan, once said, data is biased, in part because people are biased. Algorithms trained on biased data are biased. And then he said, bias in data can be fixed, bias in people is harder to fix. It's where to indicate where the bias in machine learning come from. But they also inspired me to think about what have we done to reduce the bias and improve the fairness in humans, and whether there is this connection between fairness improvement in human learning and fairness improvement in machine learning. Let's think about how to reduce human bias or human prejudice. Some people may say, I only know pride and prejudice. Well, that's actually a good start. If you know that pride leads to prejudice, think about what pride indicates. Pride and ignorance, they are closely connected, and they mutually beget each other. It's long been recognized that prejudice is the consequence of ignorance. And Kofi Annan once also said, when we confront ignorance with knowledge, Racism can, will, and must be defeated. There is also scientific evidence in the psychology domain that knowledge enhancement leads to less bias, but experience enhancement leads to more bias. So this is in human learning. So in machine learning, there is this interesting connection between feature set enhancement and knowledge enhancement. For example, when we collect more features, it's very much like we collect more information to get more knowledge, to learn more about an object. And similarly, there is this interesting connection between training data size enhancement and experience enhancement. We will get more data, so it's very much like humans get more experiences. So realizing this interesting connection between machine learning and human learning, the focus of this paper is to understand the role of feature set and training data set enhancement in machine learning fairness improvement through an empirical study. So we designed three research questions. The first question is about how does enriching feature set affect machine learning fairness? The second research question is to study the influence of enriching training data set on machine learning fairness. And for the last research question, we explore the coupling effect between feature set and training data set enrichment. We choose five widely used data sets in the fairness literature. We also use different machine learning algorithms. And uh, we use four fairness metrics to measure the fairness changes. There are two bias mitigation methods that are adopted to check whether they would affect our observations. And we use three analysis approaches to analyze our results. These figures realize the impact of feature set enrichment on fairness. 
Different lines represent different fairness metrics, and the smaller the values of these metrics are, the better the fairness is. It's easily observed that when the feature set is enriched with more features, almost all the lines drop, indicating that the fairness gets improved. And what's more, almost all the changes are statistically significant, and the average fairness change rate is as high as 38%. Based on this, we get the answer to the first research question, that is, richer feature sets have a notable positive influence on the fairness of machine learning models. And this actually highlights how important feature enrichment is when we try to build fair machine learning software. The second research question, that is, the impact of training data set enrichment. Here are the results where the horizontal line shows different sizes of training sets. Interestingly, we didn't observe any unified patterns as we observed for the first research question, which means we can't say that, well, if we use more training data, we could improve the fairness. What's more interesting is that for two cases, when the fairness is measured by disparate impact, the fairness even gets worse when there are more training data because we can see that the lines go up. Check the statistical analysis results with ANOVA, we found that most changes are not statistically significant. And overall, the change rate is actually below zero. This means that when we enrich the training data set, the overall fairness actually gets decreased. We next dig deep into the two cases where the fairness decreases and try to understand why this happens. So we get the answer by checking the original bias in the training data before applying the machine learning model. It turns out that for these two cases, the bias in the original training data is pretty high. For example, for the adult sex um, data set, the disparate impact fairness is as high as 0.637. When the training set size increases, the line actually slowly approaches the original bias in the training data. So this means that when there are more training data, if the training data is very biased, then more data just gives the learning model a better opportunity to learn the bias in the data. Based on these observations, our answer to the second research question is that a larger training data does not mean more fairness. The overall fairness change rate is even below zero. The third research question is about the coupling effect of feature set enrichment and training data set enrichment. And we visualize the results with 3D surface plots. So we can see that from these plot examples, when there are fewer features, the surface rises more steeply. This observation indicates that when there are fewer features, the negative impact of larger training data on fairness is even more significant. Based on this, our answer to the third research question is that when there are fewer features, the unfairness increases faster with a larger training set. The empirical study has a series of implications for developers and researchers. For example, there is usually this belief that there is a trade-off between fairness and accuracy in machine learning. But our results indicate that there is indeed this sweet point that with more features, it is totally doable to improve both fairness and accuracy. Our results also have some interesting inspirations on previous findings in the psychology domain. For example, scientists found that older adults have a tendency to be more prejudiced than their younger counterparts. This is an observation without enough explanation, so scientists don't quite understand why this happens. Experiments indicate that it might be interesting to further explore whether for those people with less knowledge, they might have more bias when they get older. So to conclude, our work is inspired by human fairness, but in the end, we found this interesting similarity between the solutions to improve human fairness and the solution to improve software fairness. Our results also suggest more promises in this interesting loop between human learning and machine learning. So we know that machine learning is inspired from human learning, but perhaps human learning could also get lots of insights from machine learning. At the end of this talk, I'd like to call out that since knowledge is so important in both human learning and machine learning, let's learn more about each other and better understand each other 
to fight against bias, prejudice, and racism. Thank you very much for your time. Any questions are welcome. Questions are welcome. Good morning again. Thank you for joining us. The Q and A set of the ignorance and prejudice in software fairness paper. I'm Alexander Sinerbrenik from Eindhoven University of Technologies in the Netherlands. Um, and it's a great pleasure for me to chair this session. We are privileged to have both authors of this session present here, Jia Zhang and Mark Harmon. And I see that we already have a first question from the from group, uh, Talikli. Uh, do you think there are, can be cases where rather than enriching the features, some features can work better? Also, in some cases, enriching data might not work, since one cannot have the unbalance in the data. And Google further refers to the AI-based recruitment tool, which started to favor males over females while recruiting software engineers, overlooking such features as programming skills. Yeah, OK, thanks. That's a very good question. I think um, there will be cases uh, sometimes that enriching the uh, feature Enriching the, I mean, removing some features may not, uh, uh, um, sorry, I mean, removing some features can work better, but it totally depends on the quality of the features your data set. So, for example, if you have a very uh, informative feature that uh, may affect the performance of your machine learning models very much, then removing that, of course, will uh, improve the accuracy or the fairness. But uh, based on our results, I think. Uh, most data sets, their features are like uh, uh, very well uh, collected. So that's why our results show that enriching the features uh, work very well. Um, and the thing, the second part is, um, oh, just to give an example. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, and, um, so, so that, like sort of the second part is more about enriching the data set, which is not always possible. Yeah, that's indeed. Uh, um, a problem sometimes, but I think now we see this trend in machine learning that uh, instead of focusing on imp improving the algorithms, we should put more focus in improving the data. I say that uh, some like uh, scientists like uh, 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 Andrew and Jay, they all posted to call for more research focus on improving the data, although it's very challenging uh, comparing to just to improve the algorithms, but still sometimes the I would say the bottleneck uh, exists in the data, and we have to uh, try to find ways to improve that. Right. So you're, co you're calling for collection of more data, but this is, of course, data about human subjects. So there are lots of privacy and GDPR issues coming into picture. Uh, and um, so how would you essentially uh, balance uh, the Collecting uh, just information, just a feature rather than essentially as much as possible. Yeah, I think, uh, it, it, of course, we have to obey the rules. You know, we, we couldn't collect data that violate uh, human rights. Um, but I, I think I'm sure there are ways we, we could uh, collect data uh, obeying all these rules. I think Mark may have lots of insights on this side, right? <laughs> why why do you imagine I have insight? I see we have some more questions actually. So rather than listening to me droning on, let's go to Ari and uh, Ita. Okay, let's go to Ari's question. So Ari is wondering if our approach could also monitor the systems continuously learning and continuously evolving, or in terms of continuously evolving trainings. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure. Th thanks for the question. I'm not sure I, I quite understand this question. Um, yeah, I, I think Eric's idea is well. If you can, um, if you can see that there's more or less fairness, then could you use this as a kind of a metric for fairness? But I think maybe the answer here is that we use lots of. There are lots of existing metrics for fairness, right? So monitoring fairness. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's a solved problem, but it's a well-researched one. But but what? What this paper does, what what I think Jay's fantastic insight was, was well, what are the what are the drivers of, of fairness? So, irrespective of the, that panoply of different metrics, what what are the things that, for most of those metrics, will actually drive fairness up or down? And that's the big insight, I think. All right. So, 
um, let's go to the next comment. She likes the idea of improving the data and suggests the source of the problem, but she also asked the data has to be checked for bias at the start, so this bias can be removed. And then a connected question by Arias Ekbali, who is wondering whether replacing some discriminatory features with uniform or some form of balanced distribution could help with removing those biases. Yeah, the very good question. We so we did some deep analysis for the bias in the training data, and we indeed found that if the training data is biased, then the more data you have, the you, you the the model may learn more bias from the data, and um, um, think of, so. Speaking of the bias mitigation methods, um, some methods would target on um, removing the bias in the training data. For example, they would try to make the data more balanced or uh, making uh, the, for example, the acceptance rates before applying the machine learning model uh, more balanced. I think uh, there are already a series of work on, um, on improving the training data. Uh, I mean, the original bias in the data. Yeah, but I think, uh, of course, there, there are lots more work needs to be done. Right, right. Yeah. So your work is has been essentially inspired by this connection between software learning and human learning. Um, and uh, you seem to transfer uh, the insights of human learning to software learning. I was wondering whether you can also insights in the other way around so what you have learned about software how can it be applied to humans yeah i think it's a loop as i said at the end of the video so will our findings for example uh reveal that uh, if you enrich the feature set you could uh, um, improve the fairness uh, then then um in analogy to human learning, it's like when you enrich your knowledge, you know, you may reduce your prejudice and discrimination. So I think it's an um, indication. I won't say that our uh, results will directly lead to that conclusion, but I think it uh, will give lots of indications. And, and uh, I hope that it will arouse more future work to study this connection. I mean, how we could uh, enrich people the knowledge to help them reduce their bias towards many issues. All right. Yeah. I have two more questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. So Felipe mm -hmm. Ebert uh, asks, uh, whether you have any suggestions when dealing with really imbalanced data sets and whether it's affecting your performance of your approach? And what would be essentially the best approach to ensure yeah, I think in balanced data set, it's uh, one issue for the buyers, but uh, not uh, all the reasons for that. But it's a, uh, it's it's indeed challenging. Um, so um, currently, the the to deal to deal with imbalanced data sets, we usually uh, other argument the majority class or re, uh, remove some data from the minor minority class, for example. Um, yeah, but I, 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 I'm not aware of uh, like very effective ways to deal with this. I think we, we still need to put more focus on the data collection part. That, that's my opinion. So Yorgos is asking, um, how do you balance model performance with or data to make the model less biased? And whether there is any work uh, in this uh, field on, um, let's call it bias, Reduction. Um, you know, give me a second, please. Do you sure. Answer? Yeah, yeah. So he, he in the original question, it's less balanced, but then there is a co another comment saying it's about less biased than rather than less balanced. Um, is it a question from from Georgius? Um, yes. It's, yes. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Um. Well, maybe you can take uh, this. this maybe, we need, maybe we need to clarify the difference between balance and bias. So you can have a, a completely unbiased but very imbalanced data set. That's just to do with whether you have more in one category than the other, balance, right? But bias is, is a different thing. OK, so since we have 10 more seconds, let's 
to the discussion room. And if you have this topic, I would like to say that there will be a panel on enhancing